Hello again, I'm Amit, the PCV guy. Today I'd like to discuss controlled impedance. So you can get controlled impedance in one of two ways. First is to specify the dielectric thicknesses that you're looking for on your fabrication drawing and not specify any controlled impedance at all. Second, which I think is the better way, is to specify the layers in which you'd like your controlled impedance lines on and the target ohms. Remember, standard tolerance is plus or minus 10 ohms. And if you want it tighter, like 5% ohms, we can do that. We just have to plan ahead of time. Sounds easy, right? But remember, we also plan based on the press out thicknesses that we expect from the prepreg. This is based on the amount of resin in the prepreg, the amount of copper area, and the thickness of the copper on the opposing layers. We get the copper area from the data you send us to create a final model. So we don't even follow the thicknesses on the data sheets. We follow our press out thicknesses in our modeling, which varies slightly from design to design. That's why after you send an initial stack up and target the line widths, we come back to you for approval on small adjustments here and there in the trace widths and spacing. Sounds a little bit more complicated, doesn't it? You see, there is a difference between the core and the prepreg. The core dielectric doesn't really vary after lamination because the copper is on the outside and it's B stage material. If you use prepreg for the dielectric thickness, the height does vary based on the copper area and the height of the copper and the glass cloth styles that we've chosen at the time of planning the build. All of our lamination cycles have computer controlled profiles to achieve consistency because that is what happens during lamination. Some customers, however, choose to go with a core construction versus a foil construction. The core construction is when you use an already cured core material for the outer layer and the next layer in so that the dielectric thicknesses don't change after lamination. This construction takes away the variation in dielectric height. However, this type of construction or stack up isn't always possible, for example, in HDI designs. All manufacturers have a restriction on the height of copper based on the spacing requirements. Our table is here. This means that if you're doing HDI or have trace and space less than three mils, you should pay attention to the copper weight that is possible at the time of modeling. If you have a blind via on that layer, then the manufacturer has to consider the aspect ratio of the blind via, which should be 0.75 to one, in order to ensure good plating in the blind via. So for modeling impedance on HDI designs, the thickness of the dielectric is controlled not by what's available by the material manufacturers, but by the aspect ratio of the microvia. And the thickness is a big part of the modeling. More copper weight equals more variation in the shape of the trace. Sometimes you can even get undercut, which has to be factored into the impedance modeling. So what you get when you buy from a more expensive PCB manufacturer is better tolerances because they're investing in controlling their processes better, which means better performing circuit boards for you. So it's not just the base material, but it's also how the board is processed, which impacts the final performance. So how do we ensure that you get what you're asking for? We perform a cross section of the panel and measure the relevant thicknesses. So in this cross section, we're looking at a plated through hole that's been cut in half. This ensures that there's good connection of the inner layers and that there's a copper wrap and the copper is even throughout the hole. For class three boards, there are different requirements that also include calf and edge back. So please refer to my other videos in regards to class three and class three A boards. So now that we know we have all the key influencers manufactured properly, we use a TDR machine to test that the ohms are accurate and that ultimately the model that we used in the beginning was also accurate. You will see the TDR report in the documentation that goes with your order. So if your board is fairly complex with lots of impedances on multiple layers, then it's customary for us to build an initial stack up model for you. So if your requirements are not so strenuous, you can also use our free online stack up and controlled impedance tool. It's a 2D field solver and will get you where you need to be with your trace and space requirements and overall board thicknesses within reason. So thanks again for tuning in. Make sure you check out our impedance calculator link below. It's awesome. And until next time.